So I have a son who is eight years old, and I couldn't organize our uh, classes, lessons, teaching uh, time at home. So I decided, okay, I should do something within his school, because when, when he is in school, he's much more disciplined, he's much more willing to learn. And when the, my local Tower school asked for volunteers to do some sort of robotics, programming, whatever, I volunteered. And I spent the whole semester teaching little kids aged around eight years old. And here are some of my outcomes, results. So treated as like my experience with teaching kids who are quite young. I will mention which things made them struggle. And I will also talk about the robots. And I will just copy paste the marketing bullshit from the vendors that produce those robots, but yeah, whatever. Okay. Let's start out. Scratch is the most popular visual environment for children. And there are several versions of Scratch. The, where's my mouse? Yeah. The first version is available on any Ubuntu or Debian system. And it's, and I think I'll just show it to you quickly. And by visual environment, it, I mean that it's really visual. We start with some blocks. So that's the usual way to start. We may add some loops. There are objects which are called sprites because they are mostly about graphics. And children are usually interact with these sprites. And let's just demo how do these sprites may do something. Yeah. That's good enough. I'm pressing the green flag. And that kitten keep hello. Uh, there are simple uh, actions that children can assign to sprites. Most of the sprites making them produce sound, um, calculating when the sprites are coll uh, colliding, right. it all, my mouse is gone again, okay. it all works fine. And, but the main issue with version one scratch is that it doesn't allow you to create functions or how do we call it, special blocks. So whenever you create a more or less complex application, your screen is covered with all these blocks and it's a mess. That's why, no thank you, scratch version two was developed. Ah, give me back, nothing works. What? I hate open office. But I hate Microsoft Office more. Oh, okay, almost there. Uh -huh. Cool. I will show you the current version of Scratch, which is version two, and which is the version my class was using. It's based on which is meh, but it works, and uh, children in my class were limited with Chromebooks, and if you uh, allow the flash, it works pretty well. And the main advantage, advantage is that you don't have to install anything, and it's hard to install uh, anything on the Chromebook, and you can save the files on the Chromebook, and you can actually create uh, subroutines, but I should admit my, that most of my pupils were not that keen. Nobody developed a program complex enough to actually create subroutines. Uh, what else? Yeah, this is how it looks, different kinds of actions. And I should admit that it's pretty easy to start. You don't have to learn what is the main loop. You don't have to learn. You don't have any problem. It just works, and that's why it's pretty good for children. And there is a new version of Scratch, which is available in preview. And it's based on proper HTML5. Yeah, try it now. It looks much better. And it works much smoother. It doesn't. And if you want to try that, 
try that. But B1, it works pretty badly in Firefox, so rely on Chromium or, yeah, on Chromium, what else? <laughs> uh, apart from the environment, Scratch also provides us with materials, us, like teachers, provides with uh, materials, and these materials are nice cards with little mini puzzles, and even simple solutions to help them. And most of children enjoyed solving these puzzles, and later uh, they used the solutions on these puzzles as reference points. If they wanted to use, reuse some um, code, well, some functionality which they know is available in cards, they just go search for a card and use it as a reference guide, and they create more and more complex programs used, uh, used on that way. And it's well designed. Actually, I should have it, ah, whatever. I should have it in my backpack. And that's, that really saves the time. In the last uh, classes we had, we also tried different kinds of robots, and I will switch to that topic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. May block robots. I will just uh, go and click through all these links because there are nice materials presented by vendors. Why is it? Why does it look like shit on this screen? Okay, whatever. Huh. Okay. Uh, the most popular robot uh, in schools is this M block. It's super, uh, it's easy available in most stores. I will just provide the links to PBTech because you can go and buy the stuff here in Wellington. And these are uh, really simple robots. They have a couple of motors. They have a couple of sensors, uh, distance measuring sensor and uh, line tracking sensor. And they, the cool part about M-Block robots is that their own environment is purely based on Scratch. They have just added few extra functions and I will in a second. Yeah, they replaced the original kitten with his, their own panda. Uh, it looks slightly better for me. And there is a special folder for robot-related uh, stuff. I have not had this robot with me today. I've returned back to school. But I will show you how this visual code translates into Arduino C. Because that helped me when some of the functions were clearly wrong. So this, 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 unfortunately, this environment is not perfect, and when you start to pull something complex out of that, if you start to mess with text variables and stuff, sometimes it fails, so yeah, being able to check the actual code is really nice. Uh, everybody blinks with lead. I don't have the lead, but I will still show that to you. And I can combine it with the original scratch blocks, and I go back to robots. Yeah, kind of that. This is where I could have chosen the robots, and they have quite a number of them, or you can use any Arduino-based robot. That's the way to connect to the robot. Fortunately, books, only the USB version, uh, the USB way to connect to the robot is available, and even though you may have wireless M-Bot, it won't work. And yeah, here we have the actual code generated from that. Uh, it's quite readable. But I won't ask my kid to go and read that. Actually, a significant improvement in my exercise with my son as soon as he started to read. Because before he was able to read, that was really hard. Because whenever I, I was going to show you, here we can connect this block and that block and go to that uh, area. And I named that area, say, sound. He asked me, where is that sound? And yeah. If your children cannot yet read, per they be young to program. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was the M block environment for the. What price?
guys. Yeah, around 150 for the basic one, and they have more fancy uh, models. And you can also attach stuff and you have to pay for them. And to be fair, you should be able to uh, construct your own robot much, much, much cheaper. But this is the stuff for teachers in school to just go grab, pay a little bit, believe me, that's a little bit compared with Lego, I will talk a little bit later, and start working with children. Yeah, pretty sturdy bot. I kind of forgot. It. Okay, ah, the cool part, they have software of three different things. They recently, really, yeah, that's almost the same version that I've showed to you. They recently have developed a, an application for uh, tablets dedicated for, to, to real child's and there is no, no, no words there. I have not tried that, to be fair, but it looks fine. And they also redeveloped the new version based on the patches and the specific patch. And it looks much better, but again, I had no chance to play with that. Sorry about that. But that looks pretty good. What else? Yeah, let's. Come on, what takes it so long? Yeah, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, Edison robots. Uh, these robots are really cool and inexpensive, and they do the same stuff that M Block does. That's the basic robot. It costs around seventy dollars. It comes with a couple of wheels and a couple of motors, and every motor can count its rotations, which is pretty important. Uh, there is a light sensors underneath, so you can use it for line tracking. There is a sound sensor, which uh, may be used to control the robots, like claps. Yeah, usually you don't expect this to recognize speech. It has a couple of infrared receivers and uh, emitters, which will, may be used to uh, measure the distance. And also these receivers may be used to get any signals from any remote. And also they allow you to combine several robots of this kind and uh, send messages to each other. Uh, a couple, uh, and three buttons. And it's really interesting uh, how you do get the code inside. With, M -block, uh, with Mbot and Chromebooks, it was quite, quite painful to figure out how to connect it via USB. This thing gets the data through sound. You literally take the, the cable which goes into your speaker's uh, output. They recommend that you put uh, the volume on the highest. And this sound trans uh, transmits into LED uh, flashes. And these LED flashes are read by the sensor underneath. And this is how it, uh, it works. Probably I should demo that. Uh, yep. As with Unblock, there are three different environments uh, to use it uh, with. There's a super simple dedicated to kids. I will show it to you because I spent some time there. It's not that simple. And environment which is slightly more complex and the last environment where they provide is almost environment but they don't allow you to so meh okay I will just go it works on any tab which is pretty convenient you don't even have to read a book. That's a big deal for schools. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. Huh. And there's even a for me. Ah, maybe it's my last program. Ah, cool. So, can you see that? Cool. Blocks are combined into different categories. These are moving blocks. Uh, usually when you write code for your robots to track lines, you have to properly read the sensor's data and then decide. For the kids version of the environment, they inbuilt 
the basics of line tracking, the basics of light following into the environment, so you don't have to actually work with the data. There are some numbers here, but it's just a minimum of them. Okay, uh, I will compile the program. Yeah, maximum volume. I press the record button. Is it alive? Don't tell me it's not alive. No way. No, 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 no. Of course it doesn't work. But I have now one. No? Okay, there will be no demo of robots connecting to each other. So now it, it's waiting for commands. And there is a sound which resembles the old uh, modems from the old times. And now I'll try to execute a program. Uh, why, oh, it's waiting for a message, but that message will never come because the other robot is dead. Okay, I'll change the program. Stupid me. Yeah, let's get this thing away. Uh, I should admit that without mice, using visual environments is pretty hard, but children got used to that. I was explained that there's no point in buying mice for computers in school, these mice are being lost or damaged in, in days. Okay. Okay, this robot will wait for double clap, then it will put on the lights, then it will go forward. Let's make it just two seconds. And it will go backwards. Not that cool, but yeah, and it will turn off the LEDs. Let's try that out. Yeah. Oh, no way. Now it should be waiting for double clap. Nope. Yeah. Well, kind of. <laughs> yep, that's the Edison robot. What is also cool about uh, this robot, if you don't have any computers and stuff, just in case, they allow you to use pre-written programs, and these pre-written uh, uh, programs are set in the memory, and to activate them, you have to put that little robot on top of a uh, printed uh, barcode, it will read the barcode and then switch to that mode. It was great to test the robot when I just unpacked that, so maybe usable as well. What else? Mm. Uh, my colleague and friend Mark has uh, the first version of Mindstorms, and this first version of Mindstorms is really hard to use nowadays because COM ports are no longer available now and Windows is also not, Windows 95 or 98, what was that? It's also not installed on every machine. And we tried f uh, for a bit to use these robots to pull through Mindstorm's uh, mechanics, because these things are kind of Lego compatible. This, for example, this was built by Mark for a few minutes ago, is, can be also built with Lego parts. And it kind of works, and by kind I mean that the motors are quite weak compared with the original Lego motors. So you can't reproduce all the original Lego builds, but you can uh, pull something out of that. Uh, you being able to add Lego parts, you can also connect them using these Lego connectors. There are studs and points, and the builds I saw in the net was just having doubles uh, 
double robots like this. Talk more about that in a second. Not here. Okay. Uh, that's the core of the uh, Lego EV3. And it's the same for home and education version. And it's a proper computer, and you can run your own Linux in that. Lego is pretty open with the specs, and you probably cannot see that, that there's a proper booting log going on screen right now. Linux has been booting. You can't read it. Uh, it's hard to read what's going on. Uh, the cool thing is that also, uh, this brick comes with Bluetooth option, but it doesn't come with Wi-Fi. Though it has USB adapter, and you can just plug in the regular Wi-Fi adapter, which I did, and you can SSH into that brick and do whatever kind of stuff you wish to do. And I'll try to show it to you, probably using this one, because it's already booted. It shows me the IP. I wonder what name did I give to that? Not the best way to do when you are being filmed. Ah, I'll try this one. Uh, Yeah, the processor here is 300 megahertz MIPS something. The amount of RAM is roughly 64 megs of RAM, and most of that is used by the by this visual shell. Oh, cool, here I am. Yes. And you can actually run Python from here. Not even try to demo it to you, it won't work in this environment. But whenever you are writing a program, you have to be careful with your RAM, because those six megs of RAM are not that much. And when, whenever you see any videos of enthusiasts running super complex programs like uh, Rubik's Cube Solver using Lego, most of the time they put the logic outside. So some other machine usually solves the uh, Rubik's Cube and puts back the instructions. What does the Yep, Brickman is that shell which allows you to do some interface related stuff using that buttons and screen. <laughs> yeah, the best setup to run Python I read about but I have not set up is to use a remote the, in Python notebook with remote kernel. So you uh, host your notebook on your machine with plenty of RAM, but that notebook executes the commands on the Python kernel on that robot, and that works the best. <sighs> Unfortunately, neither my son nor his friends were ready for Python shell and stuff like that. That's pretty scary. So that's why I have used a slightly different approach. Uh, so let me get back to my supervise. There are two main projects for running independent Linux on Lego EV3. One is LeJOS, and it's all about Java. And the cool thing about LeJOS is that the code you write may be compiled for all the versions of Lego, including the Mindstorms version one, if you find a way to put the data in. And another project is EV3 
free dev which I am using. And both of these projects come with an interface to Open Roberta Lab. And Open Roberta Lab, that I'll show you in a second, is the graphical environment similar to all the graphical environments that I've showed you. But it allows you to play with, with this kind of robot. To run that, I have to enable Open Roberta Lab here. Connect. Yeah, there's plenty of robots available here, and I will choose every dev. And connect. And I put in this pin code here. And there is, a yeah, cool story. Whenever you want to connect this brick to Wi-Fi, you have to put in the password. And in certain organization, the password is this long line of characters of all kinds of stuff. And using these four buttons, five buttons, to enter 20 characters of, from, from different cases, different kinds of characters, it took me more than two minutes. And if you have a single mistake, you have to start over. Okay, so that robot is connected to the Open Robot Lab. Uh, in theory, I should go to So this is where I describe to the environment what kind of robot do I have. And the most important bit for me is to set up the motors problem. And it says motor B and motor C. Let me just check. Yeah, motor B and motor C. I can also set up all other kinds of parameters. For example, the size of my wheels, if I have wheels, and the direction. So whenever you are asking the environment to turn to a certain angle, it will calculate what, how many rotations each motor should do to turn your model, but I don't care now. And I just want to show you that this thing works. Or it does not. And it takes, oh man. Come on, just work. Yeah. And this environment is really similar to the scratch environment that my son and his friends are used to. There are loops. It's not overcomplicated. Yeah, variables. I'm not sure about functions. Ah, actually, yeah, there were functions. And even if you don't have robot, or you have only a single robot, and there are five of your friends waiting for their turn, uh, there is a nice simulation, simulation here. And you can run your program using that virtual robot, and that virtual robot is this standard robot with two wheels, line tracking sensor, and distance sensor. Just like these little ones, just that, like the that M-Bot, and just like the regular model that you usually build from the educational set for 800 stores. Yep, basically that's it. That's the most to run the Lego robots now when my son cannot do Python. And and there is a problem with that. If you ever consider going to Lego competitions, and there are Lego competitions even in New Zealand, you must use only Lego parts, and you must use the original Lego software. Yeah, that's a little bit painful. <coughs> um, what else? The cool thing about Open Robot Lab is that it generates a Python file. Actually, I should be able to see that. It should put it right in the root of my folder. Um, maybe not. Yes. Huh, that's it. Yeah. Not the best program. 
but it's readable and you can build on top of that. Yeah, enjoy that failure in EV3. It, it definitely has some German roots. Yep. And yeah, back to my super slides. Uh, just for reasons, I've put the links if, uh, for those who are going to try Python with that kind of robots, because I would not be surprised if some of you robots, because Lego is the most popular brand after all, and these resources are quite nice. And speaking about third party stuff, which is illegal for official competitions, uh, but this third party stuff is really, really cool. Uh, there's a whole list of supported software, uh, hardware. Uh, let me just show that to you. For example, plenty of additional sensors and uh, most notably video cameras. And uh, these video cams are actually computers by themselves which uh, do some sort of video processing and they simplify the process data and um, give it back to your brick. So you even using that pretty powerless brick, you can still do quite complex applications. There are third party sensors of different kinds and let's just, let me just show it to you. That's the third party sensor which costs the same price as the original Lego. And while the original Lego is roughly this size, pretty bulky, this is tiny, this comes with a tiny wire and it's much more powerful. It's, while the Lego uh, gyroscope is one, only one axis, this comes with three axes and it also has accelerometer and compass and all that goodies. You cannot use stuff like that on, during the official competitions. And the ultimate way to play with your Lego sets is to use Raspberry Pi via special adapter. Yeah, these adapters come from different vendors. Let's show the one from Mind Sensor. So basically, it allows you to connect your Lego stuff, and by Lego stuff I mean sensors, motors, to your Raspberry Pi. It also provides you with a screen in this case. And Raspberry Pi is so much more powerful, so much more powerful. But you have to deal with uh, the power. Also, it's much more, but yeah, I think that's the next step for me when my son actually goes to Python. Yeah, 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 you take Raspberry Pi, you put that shield, and you use all, yeah, all the more, yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be not the best way uh, money-wise, because all these motors, all these sensors, they cost a lot, much more than you uh, could get from non-Lego, non-Lego compliant parts. But if you already have a whole box of uh, Lego, and yeah, some of us do, <laughs> that may be quite easy. And building Lego is still easier than building and gluing or and soldiering uh, stuff for children. For example, I could I almost could uh, uh, assemble that robot back from the transport mode in five minutes, while if I have to glue or screw something, yeah, that won't be that easy. Yep. And just the last bit. <sighs> Why is it so ugly? Yeah. Starting from the next semester, or from this semester actually, I'm joining the code club in Tava. And actually that's a whole network of clubs dedicated to teaching children, I assume children, for basics of programming. They also teach cool stuff about Raspberry Pi. They even mention mine, uh, Minecraft for those who can, building robots. And if you go to that site, you may volunteer and join any club next to you. For example, Kandala Club is uh, looking for volunteers, as far as I remember. Maybe somebody lives there. And yeah, just have a look. Or if you have children of 
aged like seven to say 14. Uh, that's quite an option for them. And I think that after the next semester, I will tell you about my experience in that golf club. But yeah, so far, that's my experience. Ah, speaking about children and programming, most stuff that you take for granted is actually pretty hard. For example, for eight years old, decimals are not natural. So you have to explain how decimals work. What is O.5? What is O, uh, O5? How do you slice uh, numeric intervals into parts? That's pretty hard. Uh, even uh, coordinates are pretty hard for them. You have to explain what is the X coordinate, what is the a, uh, Y coordinate, how do you move? Even the distance is not super obvious. I had to use a measuring tape to explain uh, what's the difference uh, what's the distance between different objects? How do we calculate it? What's the collision? How can we uh, work with that? Angles. Angles are also not that simple for young children. What is 30 degree? What is 45 degree? What's 90 degree? Sharp angles. Yeah, it was pretty hard. On the other hand, children are, they don't care if they don't know something. They are much more enthusiastic and they just, uh, do a trial and error way, and they get whatever they want. Whenever you are frustrated, they just keep it as normal and just keep going. For example, I was just reading the how to, to put the code into that robot. One of the kids behind me already connected that and already figured out how, what uh, buttons should he click on his Chromebook to put the data in. Okay. Because for me, uh, using sound channel to put data, it's something, something, something pretty unusual. For him, whatever. <laughs> yep, that's me. If you have any questions, comments, yeah, grab me and ask them. Thank you. Thank you.